Hi, Hill City. Welcome to our online discussion. We have had these on the weeks when we normally schedule a house church just in order to talk about the sermon content and maybe lay out a little more uh, thoroughly some of the points and how they might apply to your lives. Um, we are doing something a little different. We're doing a discussion over Zoom. And we did this a few times for the Sabbath practice last year, just as an opportunity to hear some different voices. Usually you hear from me and John. And so um, I thought it would be interesting then and now to hear from people in the church who have some sort of practice of the discipline at hand. As you know, we are going through the prayer practice series right now. And as I said um, last week when I preached, it's not just a sermon series. It's meant to actually encourage all of us as a church community to grow in our practice of prayer. And this curriculum comes from Practicing the Way. You can check out their resources at practicingtheway.org. And we're uh, now about halfway through. So there are four teaching weeks of this, four discussion weeks, and we are almost to the uh, week four. And we're excited that some of you are accepting the invitation already to begin practicing prayer more deeply. In the sermon from last week, definitely go check it out. I talked about talking with God. So as opposed to talking to God, where we might like children be learning some vocabulary, be using pre-made prayers, um, be learning to think about God as our father. Uh, now we are talking with God, which has to do with the more maybe organic or natural expressions that flow from our deepening relationship with Jesus. So basically what you usually think of as prayer, when you bring those desires or petitions or worries or fears or joys before the throne of God and doing that based on the relationship that you have with him. Uh, there's so much more to that, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. Uh, this week, I have my lovely sister, Abby, with me, who's going to share a little bit about her own prayer practice. So, Abby, could you describe for people what your rhythm of prayer looks like? I can. No. <laughs> um, before, before I do that, I just wanted to say that I was uh, really excited that this was like kind of the next practice, um, from practicing the way because prayer for me, and this has been kind of an evolution over the last few years, but my own prayer rhythm has changed, um, in ways that I would think are quite dr like dramatic or radical. And this has been like over time, over a, a few years, uh, few yeah a few years so um I just was kind of excited because it's like oh yeah the this kind of thing that I've been growing in and really wanting to grow in and getting to do that as a church community is really cool so I was excited that that was the the one that we were doing next um when it comes to fasting I you know I don't know so much about that but <laughs> Um, for prayer, I, so my prayer rhythm, like I said, has, has kind of shifted and it's really grown slowly over the last few years, um, on a, I would say a typical like day, like for a daily prayer practice, I like to wake up earlier than I have to, um, to be able to start the day in prayer, uh, with God, I enjoy the quiet. I enjoy having time where it feels like I can just kind of come into it. And oftentimes I'm tired or a little bit groggy, but there is just something for me about starting the day in that, um, in that practice of prayer. And then kind of throughout the day, I feel like I've grown in being able to be more aware of God, like throughout the day, or at least coming back to the recognition of like, oh yeah, like God, you're with me. If there's a prayer request that comes up, being able to pray, um, as I have the time in the moment for those things, if someone comes to mind or I've read something, uh, 
being able to just more readily just in that moment pray over those things and even just when i've noticed something you know sometimes um i really enjoy walking out in nature so if i've gone on a walk in the morning and noticing something like not even out loud always sometimes just in like my head it's like oh like god that's such a cool like bird or um I know those are weeds, but they look really beautiful. <laughs> so even just those little things, uh, I feel like I've grown in being able to maybe practice the presence of God more often throughout the day. Now, obviously day to day, it changes and some days are busier than others. And I get to the end of the day and I'm like, oh man, I, I really don't feel like I was aware of you much today. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of like throughout the day. So morning and then kind of throughout the day. And then at night, um, we, me, you, and our mom for the past uh, few years have been able to pray together on several different nights. And that has been a really formative practice for me. And sometimes it's really hard. It's been hard for us to continue to do it. Um, sometimes we come to the time and it's like should guys should we just do what the verse says should we just all like groan out what we're because the spirit interprets the groanings <laughs> um sometimes we don't know like even how to start sometimes we just listen for each other like listen for what you know god might be wanting to speak over us um and through us so we've kind of gotten to experiment a little bit together in prayer, which has been a really cool thing, but obviously it's also been challenging because we've been persevering and praying over some things that feels like we've been praying about for a long time. So that's, that's one of the hard parts. And I would say, honestly, that prayer does is perseverance every day that you do it, you are you know, continuing on when sometimes you don't necessarily have the feeling or the sense of God there. It's trusting that he is mm -hmm. with you. And then I would say the only thing, like I said, day to day and, and week to week, sometimes it looks really different, but um, I've been trying to pray with Hill City on Tuesdays. There's another organization that I follow that they do Zoom calls uh, once a month on Tuesday. So I've just tried to start praying for them. Um, they do a lot of work and prayer surrounding like climate issues. So on Tuesdays, I try to be like mindful of that and pray over those things. Um, Thursday, same thing. There's a couple of organizations that I follow that I've kind of committed to pray for on that day. So as it comes to mind, or I have a moment, pray about that. Um, yeah, it's kind of, so my prayer rhythm, it's kind of been like growing and also there's been some experimentation with silence and solitude and mm -hmm. um pre-written prayers using more like a uh prayers that are already written praying through some psalms praying through scripture so it's grown and shifted but it's something that i i don't know i really want to continue with even though it feels hard mm -hmm. uh but it's yeah. just, yeah, it's been, it's been very, again, very, very formative for me. Yeah. What would you say is the biggest difference, uh, other than just like all those different types of prayer you mentioned, but what has been maybe the biggest qualitative difference, um, between how, what your prayer rhythm looked like, what your prayer life looked like, uh, back, you know, five years ago to now. Yeah, I would, again, like I said, um, things really shifted uh, probably like four, four or five years ago. And I would say the biggest shift came out of just going through some experiences and some very life-changing events mm -hmm. um, that made me kind of have to reevaluate the ways that I was doing things, my whole relationship. It really, it came down to, uh, like, I know a lot about Jesus, but do, what is the relationship like? What does that relationship look like? And so that kind of has set me on this path and prayer was a big part of that. Mm -hmm. And I would just say it was the, the recognizing 
the wanting a relationship, like the relational aspect, like it's not just like you were even saying like that movement from talking to God, which is not bad. God wants us to come to him, talk to him, but then moving maybe more into a, like a with him kind of movement. So I would say that's been the biggest shift and it's been slow. And often there are times where, you know, I struggle being in prayer because it's like, what, what is this? Is this, are you here? I'm here, but I don't know if you're here. And yeah. um, so there's still, there's still, we're, I'm a beginner. We're all going to be beginners. This is a long, long <laughs> process. But um, I would just say it's that relational aspect for me is moving more into, oh, like you want to be here with me. You want to have a relationship with me. Like I'm one of, you know, billions and yet you, you want to be here in this time with me. And um, so I think that's been a big, a big shift. Yeah. No, that's really, I think that's a really important shift to that. If you've walked with Jesus for any number of years, uh, you have to encounter at some point, uh, which is so good. I, uh, in the sermon, we talked about how this talking with God can be broken down into three subcategories. And so we said those three subcategories were gratitude, lament, and then uh, joined as number three petition in it intercession. Um, so gratitude, lament, petition, intercession. Is there one of those that feels like a more of a struggle in this season of life in general or uh, and or is there another one that feels like more of a joy or you feel more ease in in this season? Yeah, um, I would say, uh, and even when I was listening to your sermon and you talked about the gratitude part, I would say that I realized that I can so quickly forget the, the gratitude part of prayer, actually yeah. recognizing the things and really so many things to be grateful for so many things that, you know, God has done or is doing, um, from little to big. And so I would say that that really kind of reminded me again, that I feel like, um, in prayer, maybe the gratitude part has shrunk more, more than it should. Um, so that's definitely something that I, that I would like to grow in is yeah. starting off maybe with some gratitude or coming back to that. Um, I think the other one that I struggle with is, um, have been struggling with is petition. Um, I think sometimes asking for things for myself feels really hard. I think mm -hmm. intercession when it's for someone else, um, feels a lot easier and I've grown in being able to ask God for, for things, um, that I need or would like to see him do or, or, um, anything related to that. But I think it, I think I've moved past like the trying to move past the, oh, there's so many other more important things in the world. Yeah. Or I feel really guilty or like selfish asking for things or, you know, you've, you have already done so much. So it feels, you know, sometimes it feels really hard asking for something because maybe it's just not as important. But um, I think there's been, I've been able to voice that a little bit more yeah. um, as far as the, the petition part. So I think maybe the asking, asking for my own needs and especially asking sometimes what feels like over and over again, like over the long, like continuing. Yes. Um, sometimes it feels like, oh, I've asked once. It feels really hard to come back and be like, so God, could you, could you do this? Could you help me in this? Yeah. Um, I think sometimes when those things feel very close and very vulnerable, um, sometimes those types of petitions, uh, I struggle with. 
yeah. but I, um, I think it's really good. I think it's a good, a good practice, but, and then as far as, um, I think maybe the more life-giving, and this is going to sound weird, but in thinking mm-hmm. about it, I think the ability to really lament and bring what's been hard and um, difficult and be really honest and vulnerable with God about that. I think that has been something that I've seen grow in my prayer life. Um, Again, still very much a beginner in that. I I always tell people that I have a really, I hate crying in front of other people. Like I just don't, if I feel it coming on, it's like, oh, I need to escape. Um, So I do struggle with vulnerability, but I think I've been able to get to the point where it's like, okay, Jesus, me and I'm just going to be crying here. I'm just going to be telling you things that really hurt and um, are really hard. And so I think there's something that's so good um soul level good to be able to actually do that yeah and allow allow god to hold that because he wants to he he's in this with us and um so i think it sounds weird to say that that's like a i don't know life-giving part of prayer but i think so life-giving yeah the (laughs) honesty but we just need it like it's yeah, we just need to be able to be honest yes. and raw. And obviously people mention the Psalms for a reason. They're very honest and raw. And I think we have those because there is something really good for our souls when we can do that. Yeah. And I would say, which is a whole rabbit trail that I won't go down, but just, I think culturally where we find ourselves as um, people of the United States it it culturally there aren't many outlets for lament and so because of that I think even maybe even less so in the contemporary American church though there's obviously been waves of uh, connecting more with spiritual formation I think we're in one of those waves now Um, but obviously in our culture we're not the type of people who are wailing at the graveside of people you know, we're like, okay, they're, they're in a better place, you know, anyway, that's a whole rabbit trail. But I think culturally lament is something just overall don't have a framework for. So as Christians, when we're told this as part of prayer, and we can see it in the Bible, even it's still hard to connect with that, because maybe our background isn't one that's allowed for that in a great, great measure or with great honesty or raw vulnerability so well and sometimes I think too because it's it's touching emotions that can feel very uncomfortable Mm -hmm. for some people you know even though it's like okay if we know Jesus is the one who knows us best and loves us most and already knows what's really what we're really struggling with what is really painful right now you know still even in that it's hard even just one when you're just alone with him to be like, okay, here it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Well, um, I know that uh, I have grown so much just in in your encouragement in prayer that uh, it's often not uh, my cup of tea to be like, yeah, let's let's pray right now when we're all tired or frustrated or it's been a hard day so I actually feel like I've been coming into a season this year where that is something that rhythm has become more natural and something I want and I that is due in part to your consistency and I think that just goes to show everyone listening that you really do need people who can encourage you in the things you want to grow in because prayer is not an easy rhythm to establish, you know, um, I don't think I would have thought three years ago that, oh, hey, we're going to start praying. Uh, and really, it was because we were praying for someone we knew who was very sick. Um, but I didn't think that would continue. That would be a rhythm that continued. And thankfully, it did. But you need people around you who encourage you in that. So 
Uh, any last encouragement to people? Maybe this is the first time they are establishing a prayer rhythm. Uh, what would your encouragement to them be in this as they try to start doing this for the first time? Yeah, I would, I would say just, uh, like definitely give it a go. I think it can feel somewhat intimidating. I know for so many people with lives that are just jam packed, it seems hard to, um, it seems hard to, to be able to figure out like where you're going to fit in something else. But I would just say it's, it's worth it to, make this a priority and just, and don't discount starting small. Like, yeah. I think I even, I remember talking about this with the Sabbath practice. I know my tendency, you know, when a new practice comes up or, or something like that, the tendency can be to go all out. And, you know, maybe with a prayer practice it could be like, well, I'm going to get up and pray for an hour, or I'm going to, you know, do this. And, and then I think we get too far ahead of ourselves. And obviously, God can meet you in that if that's what you want to do and, and, um, jump into, but I think don't discount starting small, you know, a few minutes in the morning, waking up just a few minutes earlier, um, staying up just a few minutes later at night, if that works better for you, uh, finding a time during the day, mm -hmm. because really, I mean, the end, the end of all of this, um, like, I would love to feel like, yes, I've arrived at this level of like formation. That's just me. I'm kind of weird, but uh, um, I kind of nerd out on this stuff. But the, the end of all of this is not somehow being an expert, because really, we're not ever going to be experts. It's, it's about this relationship with God the yeah. God who wants to be in relationship with you. And so whatever needs to just get kind of rearranged in your schedule, it's worth it. Mm. And, you know, experiment. Like there are so many different ways that people find that they connect with God and it doesn't all have to be the same way oh. um, either. You know, it can be through um, prayerful reading of scripture. It could be through walking or moving your body. It can, you know, be uh, pre-made prayers, the Psalms or other things. Mm -hmm. I think just uh, maybe starting small and starting and um, yeah, kind of experimenting and see, see what works and just know that God wants to, he's present and wants to meet you in this. Yeah, that's what I have to keep telling myself every time that I come, because there will be times when it feels hard and you've spent, you know, the, the 10 minutes um, that you had and it was like, OK, I don't I don't know what that was for. Yeah. Or, you know, you have prayed over things for a very long time and you don't see something moving. But I think it's coming back to God is there and present and with us. Um, even when it's hard. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> I hope that that's encouraging to you all as we continue this prayer practice together. Um, if you would like any, if you'd like to have more conversations about prayer and how you might get started, please let us know. You can email me, hannahpaschel at myhillcity.org. Obviously, you can reach out to us when we are at services. Um, but just want to encourage you, like Abby said, start, start, <laughs> start somewhere. And if you want help in doing that, please let us know. Um, I'm going to pray real quick to end. Lord, we just do pray for everyone who might be beginning a prayer practice, that you would be with them, that you'd strengthen them, and that you'd make your presence known to them in a, in a really special and sweet way that people would make that time, whether it's a small or large amount, just to connect with you and that they would find that you're there waiting for them, waiting to speak to them, Lord, to guide them, to receive their petitions and just to show them your love. And Lord, we praise you that you are 
the God who is deeply involved in his people's lives, that you don't leave us on our own, that you don't abandon us, Lord, that even in really difficult times, you're walking beside us and that through your son, we have access to make these requests of you, to have this relationship with you. Just thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.